Hello, everyone. It's another edition of Betting Weekly Game Bet Match, the number one tennis betting podcast brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, with me, Nigel Seeley, and our senior handicapper, fresh from his return trip from Hamburg, it's Sean Calvert. Um, Sean, um, hello, mate. Thank you. Oh, well, before I was going to say, well, how are you, mate? Good I was going to, I was going to ask you a question before I asked you how you were, and the, the question I was going to ask you was this: um, Very yeah. disappointed today. We had two. Or yesterday, we had two people through to the semi-finals that couldn't make the final, which obviously caused you a little bit of disappointment. But uh, I did. saw the Instagram picture where you were in the in the back of the taxi, and you know you didn't get the the, the train was. Which one gave you more disappointment that you had to pay a little bit more money to get on the on the on the train without the underground? All those, all the all the wins that didn't get to the final in that big match. Definitely the latter, although the former was kind of annoying as well. I get. Just, just touching on the Reaper Barn first, if we may. Sure. There's a, there's a, there's a, di- there's a direct train from the Reaper Barn station, the S Barn. It goes straight to the airport in about thirty minutes, no problem. Um, I got, I got to the Reaper Barn station. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's not the smoothest of rides for a trolley, is it? It's all cobbledy and kind of. Couldn't you, know, you get that guy who was on that sort of um, disabled thing? He was going on. No, the, I'm not. I, could, I'm could not jump on the back with him. him. I'm not engaged. Well, you you, you were engaged with him quite well. You we were giving him a couple of euros to 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 get some. Oh, him? Oh, yeah, no, you could have got back on. No, you could get back of his. No, he was he wasn't there. Well, hang so on. Who, get... who was the other? Who was the other guy? The other oh, there's, disabled guy. There's, all, there's, there's tons of them down there, isn't there? It's all, there's all sorts going on down there, as you know. Anyway, wow. I got to the Reaper Barn station, and they would put these kind of um, metal barricades um, over the entrance. And the Reaper Barn station's got about five or six entrances and exits. So I thought, okay, that one's closed. Go to the next one closed they're all shut but with this random kind of metallic fence like it had just been someone had just shoved it there so i don't know what went on there so i obviously couldn't get to the the train station so i had to call an uber from where i was standing and then sort of do it that way pressing that button i know i was was, was thinking i was thinking shall i just walk to the next station but i didn't actually know where it was (laughs) and i just thought i can't bother so i'll just i'll just get an uber but um I think that they, yeah, that was the only station that they closed, so there must have been an incident down there. It, do, it doesn't oh. surprise me. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. surprise me that there's an incident down there, by yeah. the way. Um, it probably doesn't surprise you either. But, um, yeah, so I had to get an Uber. And then, obviously, when I got back, to the, the second I got back, actually, when I would got to Stansted, um, driven back from Stansted, parked the car, I thought I'd just check the tennis score. Uh, and Poppy Rim was just serving for the match against Arnaldi. So I got to watch two minutes of of pure pain. In that one, and I thought I'd just check the Atlanta score. Obviously, Wolf lost as well, so I was, that was a great welcome moment. That was so they, they were both painful in the in in sort of different ways, but yeah, neither. But was I'm pleasant. sure Mrs. Cowper was there for a nice warm welcome, a nice hot dinner, and a nice cuddle. Uh, you want to know what I had to eat when I got in last night? <laughs> God, God, schnitzel. My boy had been to the had been to the beach with some of the other his little mates, and he'd, they'd obviously been to the chip shop, and he he hadn't eaten all his chips, so there was about half a half a sort of plate full of chips and one chicken nugget so i thought i'll have that that'll do so that that was my evening last night so let's let's not be thinking this is all glamour and stuff that that was that was my um my, my evening last night well to be fair i think those chips and that nugget might have been a bit better than the uh the 50 dot, uh, euro kebab that we had <laughs> oh, yeah God. i don't know what Whoa. 55 euros for two kebabs and a plate of chips i don't know what was going on there i know i know I know, but anyway, any, anything else happened? Anything eventful? Any more stories that I wasn't there about? Any any more sights you saw? Anything else happened? The rebound? You know, we saw a lot of tennis action, which we've seen <laughs> on the Instagram account. But any anything else you can in, in, enlighten us with? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not on a family show, I can really Ooh, go into uh, too well, much of the uh, uh, of the Reaper Barn. You know what it's like, the Reaper Barn. It was. I was there obviously on the Friday night, um, and it was it was much livelier than when when we were there on what what Wednesday night was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was absolutely packed Friday night. There was there was hen nights and stuff at getting you know getting drunk at like eleven o'clock in the morning. There was all sorts going on there on on the the Friday night and the Saturday morning. It was much livelier. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you want to go there, I think we should talk about the the tennis events we go to. Um, give it a rate out of ten. Just the uh, for the tournament. What do you think the Hambo tournament was, uh, for the tennis tournament? I, I'll give it the a tournament solid was all seven, right. Yeah. Seven eight. I think seven eight. Yeah, I'd, yeah. So Hamburg is yeah. a city five for me not bad about five or six yeah not yeah. not great but not not terrible i've food, been to worse i've been food, to better food valley for me food i'm not sold on the food in germany i'm not i'm not keen i, I don't Three. know it's just me not going to the right places there, there was a couple of those those places in the portuguese quarter were, were quite nice but 
Yeah, the, the general German food. I'm not. I'm not keen on that myself. No, though. no, exactly. So low scoring for the food, a good scoring for the venue. The city itself was a bit crazy. You got to be very broad minded when you go there and open up a mind. But uh, the tennis itself was pretty good. Uh, it's very fun. The tournament, the local boy, and he's done well there. And if you followed the the video that I gave on the first day, I saw him from the f- first match. I thought he was on a mission, uh, and we would have cashed some tickets there. But unfortunately for us, on the other two tournaments, we got the semi-finals. We couldn't get that finals. But this week we're going to go one better. There are three tournaments again this week uh, across all across the world. Uh, we have a tournament in America, in the capital, in Washington, in very hot conditions. We have a tournament in Mexico, and we have a tournament in Kitzbühel in Austria. Let's start the tournament, the ATP Tour 500 event in Washington, where it's a good field, uh, dominated by American players. Again, uh, Taylor Fritz is the number one seed. Francis TFO is number two. Uh, number three seed, or- Felix auger Adias seen number four, Herbert Herkas. Four pretty big servers. Uh, conditions are very, very hot. Um, what do you think about this tournament? What do you think we have to look for, Sean? You know, you give us a breakdown of what we should expect here. I can imagine that the the big service had an advantage here with the conditions under court. Yeah, they do. It's usually very hot this week in DC. Um, it's about 30, 30 degrees all week. Well, we know for definite, sorry, possible. we know for definite that it's very, very hot in Washington. We, we you know, we have people who, who follow this show who message me from Washington and, and they speak to us quite regularly and it's hotter than usual conditions. So we know that for a fact that it's going to be very, very hot. Yeah, it's normally is very hot and humid there this time of year. They play on a, a quite a quick, quickish Sportmaster outdoor hard court here. It averages 80% holds and 74% first serve points won. Not quite as quick as as Atlanta, but still pretty quick. Forty four percent of the matches on average have featured a tie break in the last nine editions. Um, looking at the trends, it's usually been won by one of the top five seeds. Only Nick Kyrgios has broken that trend since two thousand and eleven. He did it twice, broke that trend twice. But generally, it's won by one of the top seeds. Um, as you said, big hitters do go well, but it's it's offered something for the the more sort of return oriented players as well. Nishioka. Deminor, Mackenzie McDonald, they've all made the final recently. Um, all at very, very big prices, incidentally. Um, qualifiers don't normally go well. Peter Giofchik in 2019 is the only player from the qualifying draw. He was actually a lucky loser to make the semi-finals in over 20 years at this tournament. So it's not normally a great one for qualifiers. 34% of underdogs win um, on average in the last nine editions. So those are the conditions. I'll tell you what, though. It's a very, very open tournament. You've got the betting on the, the futures market. Look at the tournament winner. It's wide, wide open. Taylor Fritz is the favourite to win this tournament. He's the number one seed. If you look at the head-to-head records, uh, not many people involved in the tournament this week have won the tournament. Yannick Sinna won it last year. Nick Kyrgios, as you said, and Zverev is obviously a two-times winner in recent years. None of them are in action this week in this tournament. Taylor Fritz, number one seed, into the final at, as we speak in Atlanta. Um, you would expect them to win there, but he's going to come here probably a little bit jaded on the high of a big win. Usually a fade the following week. But Taylor he Fritz retired is about... last year as well. Sorry, mate, just to just to put in there. He retired here with, with due to the heat last year to hear Taylor Fritz. So... So, he's, so it's not ideal for him to come back from a win then in, in, in very hot conditions as well. It's hot in Atlanta as well to come here as well in to, to do this. So he's eight to one to win this tournament. So he's his favourite, eight to one. Incredible, really. Herbert Herkas is 10 to one. Sebastian Corder is 10 to one. Francis Tiafo is also 10 to one. Felix auger the 10 to one. Grigor Dimitrov, 14 to one. Alexander Bublik, 14 to one. Andy Murray at 14 to one. Brendan Nakashima at 20 to one. Ugo and Bo, who played well last week in the, in, in glimpses, looked really good. He's 20 to one. And JJ Wolf, the person that we, the player that we bet, who got beat for us against uh, Taylor Sp- uh, Fritz in the semi-final? He's twenty to one as well. Um, ben Shelton also thirty to one, and Kai Nishikori, interesting person there in the draw, is thirty-three to one. So it's a really, really open draw here, Sean. The draw, if you break mm. down the bracket, you've got Christopher Eubanks in there at the top half with Taylor Fritz and Andy Murray, Herbert Herkas, Wolf Bublik, bottom half, Umber, Corder, Evan Shelton, TFO. I'm not really quite sure if there's a, a massive advantage, but I'd probably say the bottom half is a slightly more advantage than the top half. Um, where do you see the value in this draw with the conditions and with the heat? Well, I took uh, I took Seb Corder here last year, and I was pretty unlucky with him. It, it actually rained quite a bit here last year, and he had to play two matches in one day. Uh, Twelve months ago, did Corder? He beat I think he beat Dimitrov, and then he had to come back and later on the same day in this in the heat and humidity and play Mikhail Ema in and that went to three sets. He lost that one. So he's unlucky 
uh, you know, he's exhausted by the time he'd played his sixth set of, of the day against someone like Emer, who just makes ball after ball after ball. Or he did before he before he got unceremoniously removed from the tour. Um, so a difficult one for Corder last year, but I think he's got a good chance of of, of gaining some sort of revenge here. Looking at this draw that he's got, he's in the fourth quarter um, against a bunch of players that he's got very good records against. Francis Tierfo and Dan Evans, he's done very well against in recent times as Corder. Um, ben Shelton could be a wild card in there as well. You know, he he should go well in these conditions. He was uh, an early loser in Atlanta last week, but, you know, and he, he has kind of lost his way a little bit since sort of breaking onto the scene right at the start of the season in, in sort of quickish conditions, in warm conditions as well, obviously, in Melbourne. So he's a possibility, Shelton. But I've taken I've taken a chance on Corder here. As I said, he's got a good record against Evans and TFO. Um the latter stage is it doesn't it doesn't look that daunting for him. You know, if he gets through this quarter, which he should do, um, the semi final opponent would perhaps be Felix, maybe, but you know, Felix has done absolutely nothing this season, beset with injuries, poor form, fitness, health. He's nothing's gone right for him at all this season, has it? So it, it may go well for him this week, but it doesn't seem likely on the basis of everything we've seen from him so far this season. So no nobody in Q three would really concern me. Um, as far as Corder's concerned, obviously he's got to get there first. But looking at that draw, I think he's got a, a great chance. And the other one thing he's definitely in his favour is the fact that he's he's much fresher or should be much fresher than a lot of these guys. He's only played 19 matches so far this season, Corder, because the injury that he had uh, spent a lot of time working on his fitness. So he should have a lot left in the tank for this this American hardcore swing. Uh, and he showed what he can do on the grass. You know, he showed his, some of his best form, didn't he, at Queens before um, disappointing a bit against Alcaraz in the semi-finals there, and then he got ambushed by Vasselli in the first round of Wimbledon. So the, the form, the form is there. Um, I think he's got a good draw. So I'm happy to take him uh, each way, ten to one this week. The only problem is that people have fresh memories of that performance against Vasselli in at Wimbledon, weren't they? So that he was, it was going in there with with the same kind of not tested in, in great form, in, in great form as well. There's also a player that hasn't played a lot of tennis and it didn't really work for him. So there is that kind of question mark about him. Though. Oh yeah, there's, you know, there's a slight question mark. Slight worry about it. I think there's question marks over a lot of these. Um, there aren't many players with a positive record in in um, Washington in this draw, actually. Uh, Fritz is 2-3, win-loss. TFO's 4-6. Herkash, 2-3. Uh, the only ones with positive records are Corder, 4-2, win-loss. Nishioka, He's got a great record here, eight and five win loss. Uh, and Andy Murray from from back put is you know from back in the day seven and three. Uh, and Jeff Wolf who played well here last year. The, the most of the rest haven't got decent records here. I think Corden should the conditions should suit. Um, he's a he's a he's my pick. I mean I can't I could actually make a case for several of these, but um, as you say it is really wide open. But I'm I'm happy to take give Corden another chance. Will this be the last chance? Even though you don't give many people many last chances if they let you down, Sean. He's got to be the last chance of quarter, surely. Could be. Depends. Yeah. This year, for this season, we've got to we got to draw the line if he lets us down here, surely. Possibly. It depends on the price. If someone wants to throw up a big price in a in a favorable circumstance, then I might take it, but we'll see. I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't say. Sean Calvert's been very kind to Sebastian Corder. It's not many people you've been very kind to, Sean. You, you, you're very much cut through. I was kind to that unit. guy on the on the Reaper bar and I gave him, what, two euros or whatever it was? One euro. Oh, we did was give him one? two euros. Yeah, two euros. Two, but you, you actually read what he said and you you said you were going to take it back and Google it. So did you Google it? What, what, I, what it? I, used the, I used the photo Google Translate option on my phone, yeah. It, it, what happened was a guy come along in a in a... <laughs> In a sort of uh, what was it? A, a mechanical. It was a mobility scooter. Mobility wasn't it? scooter, and he came over and he he was raising money for the for the people on the streets of the Rebavon. Of which now, there are uh, many. Which we we could have been if our tennis picks never went that well. I certainly could have been on that on that street we were raising money for me. So I felt sorry for him, and we both gave him two euros, and he gave us a lucky note. He said, "This lucky note will be able to to guide you through, and you because you give us two euros." And um, I get to scan it to see what he said as he drifted away on the on the. Uh, well, you ago. didn't have to scan it unless you didn't speak German. Obviously, if you spoke German, well, none of, we, we didn't speak German. It's used, I know, we, but we scanned. I'm just it. saying. It. No, I I did, yeah, but yeah, well, I don't speak German. Everyone so else, everyone else on that Reaper barn, obviously they speak German. Well, no so one it, else giving money apart from us two. So there was. I don't know about that. Anyway, I, the point I, was, I I had to scan it. Yeah, um, you read it. I can sum it up. It was a massive long text, wasn't it? It was about. I thought it was say you'd three hundred words. Huh? 
I thought it was going to say you've been con. See ya. Oh no, no. As it he, just mentioned he... the word love about seventy-eight times in uh, in, in three hundred words. You must have just... known you were a tennis handicapper. I can <laughs> I can <laughs> sum it up in in a, a couple in one sentence. Basically, it was just it was basically love is all you need. That's it. The Beatles. The Beatles. There it wasn't is. The Beatles. But that's that's what that's that's the summation of that very yeah. long text that he sent. Yeah. Well. It could have been a day tripper. We can work it out if we keep going any bit worth than this or any yes, other yes. Business, But anyway, <laughs> anyway, love is all you need. Uh, let, what we need now is a winner this week, and we're going to move on to some matches here in Washington. And the first match we're going to talk about is an interesting one between two players that aren't in the best of form. Marcus Giron against Radu Albert. Uh, Radu Albert hasn't won his last four matches. Giron has only won one in his last th- uh, four as well. That was in the first round at Wimbledon when he beat Delian, a player that you would expect him to beat considering Delian's form on grass. Uh, Albert played in the Bundesliga match in the last couple of matches, a couple of challenges, lost in the first round to Shabavalov in uh, in Wimbledon. Uh, but yet, uh, you look at the market here, uh, Giron is a very heavy favourite, minus 230. Albert is plus 180. The handicap is three and a half, plus three and a half for Redo Albert, minus 127. And the total is 22 and a half. Uh, when I looked at this match, I thought it was a match to just move on, not have any, it was just one I couldn't really call. But uh, I'm interested to see how you feel this match will go, Sean. I just think this is too short on Marcus Gearon. Just if you look at the stats um, in the last 12 months at main level on outdoor hard, it's actually Albert that's got a slightly better record. Giron's got a, a 10-12 win-loss record, which obviously isn't great. And his service points, one return points, one total is 99. And Albot has got a positive record, 7-6 win-loss, and his total is 100. So he's he's better on the bare stats. He's done well in some of these hard-court tournaments, Albot. Made the semi-final at Delray Beach, quarter-finals in Los Cabos, uh, quarter-finals in Seoul in South Korea. So he's he's done well. I think I think he's been underestimated a little bit here. Um, certainly is on the stats. And the matchup, it's going. It's two guys that aren't blessed with, you know, serious power. Um, you know, they're going to have to. This is going to be a match that's going to have to be won from the back of the court on on athleticism and and on on shot making and on rally tolerance and all the rest of it. It's not like one player is going to come out and just serve the other guy off the court. This is. I think this is just a. It's just a short price. And Alberts, I've got. I've taken three and a half on the uh, gear on side. So I've taken plus three and a half game start, um, on him. At uh, around about minus one twenty, it was. How many now? Minus one twenty seven. Bet Rivers Albert plus three and a half. I head to the Bet Rivers website. Twenty eight different markets. It's a twelve p.m. start. We haven't got the order to play yet in the capital in Washington, but the action should start around about twelve p.m. Uh, so Eastern time. So you've had lots of time to be able to get these bets on on Sunday night, Monday morning as well. Another match that you highlighted is another one that really again is another one that I sort of. Again, flick through. I couldn't trust either of these players. Emil Ruzovora up against Constan Lestentine. Uh, minus 335 for Ruzovori. Plus 255 for Lestentine. Uh, Ruzovori has lost his last five matches. Uh, got to the semi-final in Hurt and Boston. He's lost in the first round at Queen's Club, Eastbourne, Wimbledon, uh, Warstad. And then you have Lestien, who's lost in his first round in the last four matches in Mallorca, Wimbledon, Newport, Atlanta. Obviously didn't even qualify in Queen's Club or in the first round at Nottingham and lost in the first round at Surbiton as well. So he's lost seven of his last eight matches. Two players totally out of form. Ruzavori, minus 335, though, for a man who's lost his last five matches. Lestien, plus 255. The spread here is four and a half. Plus four and a half for Lestien is minus 141. And the total is 21 and a half. They met twice before. One win a peach, uh, in a piece in Indian Wells in 20, this year, Reservoir won 6461. And in Tel Aviv in 2022, it was Lestien who won in straight sets 6462. Um, I'm gathering with, with the inconsistencies between both these players, I think you probably look for the value for Lestien here at plus 255. Yeah, this is too short on Reservoir. As you said, Lestien's beaten him before, he was a 3.08 plus 208. Um, underdog when he beat Rusevori indoors, quickish, sort of medium quickish surface in Tel Aviv. Um, and the last season, I think that was. Um, so on the basis of that, he can obviously do it again. The, the problem I've got with, with back in Rusevori is there's a couple of reasons. His stats aren't that great. Look, if you look at his last 12 months on outdoor hard at main level, he's won 12, lost 12, and his service points, one return points, one total is 99. It's not 
not befitting of a, of a short price favourite. As you say, he's not in great form anyway. Leicester Yen's total is 97, so just a, a couple of points um, off Rusevori's total there. The, the other thing is injury. Rusevori withdrew from Hamburg with a right elbow injury. Now, that that suggests to me that he's been struggling with that for a little while. That might have something to do with his recent losses. He's obviously decided to to give it a rest in Hamburg, but it, it means that he's had no um, hard court matches. He's, he's coming in here cold. He's coming in here from the clay. Um, I can't imagine if he's got an elbow injury, he's been practicing that much. Um, Les DM was here last week, played, um, should have beaten Humbert, served for the match against Humbert. We had him plus one and a half sets, I think, um, that day. Anyway, Les Dien should have should have won the match. Uh, as I said, served for it um, against Humbert. So the stats aren't great for Rusevori. He's got fitness problems. He's he's lacking matches on hard court. He's lacking wins and he's, 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 he's just far too short. So I've taken Les Dien again, plus one and a half sets. Um, around about minus 110, I think that'll be. Minus 110, plus one and a half sets. Remember, there's 28 different betting markets available on Bet Rivers currently on this match. So if you don't find an angle you want to have, you look through the uh, through the website, you'll find an angle. Remember, you can live stream all these matches as well on the website, either on your tablet, your mobile phone, whichever mobile device you have, you can watch the match from the comfort of your own home or wherever you are in the world. So place a bet and watch the game. Uh, the next match, uh, and again, it's a, this is quite a fascinating match, Eddie, really. I, I think this is really interesting. We have uh, Vukic, who's into the final in Atlanta up against Taylor Fritz. That match is going to be played later tonight, so we don't know how that match is going to go on. But Vukic is really had shown some really great form in Atlanta and he sort of turned his form on its head after being beaten the first round in Newport and he got beaten the second round at Wimbledon, got beaten the round 16 of Eastbourne as well. And he's up against Nakashima, who was our pick last week, uh, got beat by Christopher Eubanks in the round of 16. And actually he probably had the chances to beat uh, Eubanks. Um, his form going into the tournament wasn't that great, but he's a heavy favourite here, uh, Nakashima. Uh, to win this match. Um, he's minus $2. Uh, Vukic is plus 155. You can imagine that Vukic is going to come here absolutely exhausted after his exertions in Atlanta. The handicap here is two and a half. Nakashima giving up two and a half is minus 112. Uh, Vukic plus two and a half is minus 113. And the total here is a very high 23 and a half. Uh, they've played before. They've played twice before. The first time they met was in 2021 at Wimbledon in qualifying. Nakashima won 6-1, 6-1. Then they met in the grass this year. Vukic won a very long match, 6-7, 7-6, 7-6. 39 games over three sets of tennis. No wonder the line here is 23 and a half. If Vukic hasn't come in exhausted after his exertion at Atlanta, I think here the total games would be the play or maybe Vukic in some capacity. But how much of that run is going to take it out of him? What do you think about this match, I was going to go for for over twenty two and a half games. I was definitely that as soon as I saw that line, I thought that'll do for me. Uh, and there's there's a number of reasons for that. Um, the, the the main problem with it is you're going to have to keep an eye on Vukic because he he's obviously as you said going to be a little bit tired. Watch the match, the final against Taylor Fritz, see how he looks. Um, because this this line is it's it's definitely attackable. Um, if you look at and Brandon Nakashima away from clay. In, in 2023 at main level. He's only won 32% of his return points, which is low. And his break point conversion is also very low at 25%. So he's broken serve just 11.8% of the time this season on the quicker services. And that's what cost him again last week um, in Atlanta against um, against Eubanks. He's, he's played 0.34 tie breaks per set this season, Nakashima, um, away from clay. So uh, he's holding well enough. He's he's but he's not creating enough chances, and when he is creating chances, he's not taking hardly any of them. So all that adds up to to over games and, and uh, obviously tie breaks as well. Against Vukic and Eastbourne, Nakashima Nakashima only won twenty seven percent of return points, and you could say Vukic was a worthy winner in Eastbourne as well as a three point oh six plus two oh six underdog. He won sixty three percent of his second serve points in that match, Vukic. So he wasn't all about his serve. This is about Nakashima just struggling to break serve at the best of times. Um, and clearly he struggled to, to win any points or break Vukic at all. So unless Vukic is very, very tired, as I say, watch that Atlanta final, see what you think. Um, but the lean is is over 22 and a half games. I, it would have been a bet, but I just, I'm just not sure how he's going to be after that Atlanta final. 
Yeah, exactly the same way of thinking of me. I think that match is definitely the way to go over the games, but uh, very important to watch that match. If Taylor Fritz wins quite easy, then you would think that Vukic would come here with something to prove, but if it goes into a long, deep tournament, and also there is the the possibility that Vukic might even travel if it comes through a, a long match and wins it and wants to celebrate with his mates. Is it also the, that that uh, part of that as well? It's possible, yeah. Yeah, we're That'll moving across. We're moving across. The, sorry, Sean, what's that? I was going to say that would be a massive win for him. That's that's that would yeah. be a worthy of a celebration, I think. Exactly. So uh, make t- uh, keep a note on that. But the over total twenty three and a half match uh, games is definitely the angle in that match. Uh, um, Vukic against uh, I've lost I've lost the name. Oh, I haven't got to go back to who Nakashima. was it? Again? Nakashima. Sorry, Sean. I'm uh, I've, 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 my dog is just about to go to the vets and uh, he's, he's, his eyes in a bit bad way. So I'm thinking about that quite a lot as well at the moment. So I'm in, in a bit of a Bit of a problem with that. Anyway, let's move on to the tournament, the 250 event this week in As- in Austria, in Kitzbühel. It's the Generali Open. Another wide open event. If you look at the event here, look at this tournament betting. It, it, it's anybody. It's anybody can win this. You go down, I think the first eight in the betting, you go down to 20 to one. So there's lots of players capable of winning it. Uh, Kitzbühel is a very, very unique venue, Sean. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a clay court, uh, not, not, not towards the end of the summer. Um, you've got to be a certain type of player to win this event. What, what are you looking for here? I think we're going to have a problem with the rain here again. Right. Um, it's I think there's if the weather forecast is correct, and it often isn't, it wasn't really correct in Hamburg, was it? Uh, there's going to be 10 centimetres of rain fall on Kitzbühel in the next sort of five or six days. Um, if we just ignore that for a second, normally it's it's on the quicker side for a clay court tournament because, as you said, it's 760 metres of altitude um in Kitzbühel averages 77% holds 71% first serve points one which makes it a little bit quicker than most clay events but not quite as quick as Gestard and, and Madrid uh, if that weather forecast is correct it's going to be it's not going to be that quick this week it, the, obviously the rain will slow it down make it a bit damper um so that's that's going to be a problem it's, it's it's one to keep your eye on in terms of um the weather because it might change conditions might change quite markedly uh, looking at the trends over the years, number one seeds have had a, a really poor record here. Only Dominic team in 2009 and Casper Ruud in 2021 have won it as the top seed since Goran Ivanisevic Ivan won it in 1994. So it's not been a great tournament for top seeds. Qualifiers, though, have a really good record. Seven qualifiers have made it to at least the semifinals in the last nine editions. And the last six runners up have all been priced at, at at least 20 to one. So this is a tournament where this is this is the last clay court tournament of the year, basically. So it's it's a last chance for all these clay dogs to try and get themselves a title. A lot of these players, the, the clay dogs particularly, they're not they they won't mind, I don't think, sticking around in the rain because a lot of these guys aren't going to be too keen to, to head off to the quick American hard courts where they don't they don't fare so well. It's also been a good tournament for underdogs. Forty two percent have won on average in the last ten editions. So um there's always been quite a lot of value around in Kitsbill. Let's look at the leading contenders. Uh, the favourite for the tournament is Pedro Cachin at six to one. Then we have Thomas Martin Etcheverry at plus seven fifty. So two Argentinians at the top of the market. Third in the betting is another Argentinian, Sebastian Bays at eight uh, to one. Then we have uh, ten to one, Ofner, the local lad, Austrian, uh, looking to do that. So, uh, Lazo Jerry at eleven to one. Then we have Dominic Team, another Austrian at 12 to 1, unseeding Yannick Hanfman uh, between those as well at 10 to 1. They are the top uh, few in the lists here. But I think if you go further down the betting as well, you can find some decent alternatives as well. There's nothing there in those sort of top six in the betting that really sort of enlighten me or get me confidence going. No, I, I, I could make a case for, I could make a reasonably strong case, I think, for about a dozen of these. Um, I think it's really wide open. Really is. Um, I've plumped for one. I've I've taken um, I've taken Dusan Lajevic at uh, around about twenty to one each way. Um, I think he's got a, de- a very decent chance here this week. He's got good statistics here: eleven seven win loss, and he's got service points, one return points, one total of one hundred and four. He's made either the quarterfinals or the semifinals on five separate occasions. He's not going to mind hanging around. His clay swing. Um, earlier on in, in the spring summer was was curtailed by chicken pox. Um, ironically, against the guy he's facing here in the first round, which is Yi Zhen Zhang, he had to retire um, in that match um, live because of the, the condition that he had there at that particular time. 
I watched him last week against Fies. As I said um, in my videos from Hamburg, he could have won. He could have beaten Fies in straight set serve for the first set. Had a strong lead uh, in the second set as well. Could have come through that, beaten Arto Fies, and, and gone on a bit of a run there. He's he's the one that I like at the prices. I think in terms of value, he's the one that stands out. Having said that, I, I could also make a case, as I said, for about another half a dozen, ten, possibly twelve in this field. Um, it's really, really wide open. But I've gone with Lyovic. Very, very wide open indeed. And action starts tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern, uh, sorry, it's at 5 o'clock Eastern time, 11 o'clock local time. So head to the Bet Rivers website early to that. There's a few matches that you like here. The first match you want to talk about is Lazo Jerry up against Christopher O'Connell. Um, what do you think about this game? Um, give us the lines and what you think. My mate Jerry, yes. After <laughs> after last week, uh, English starred, lost in the first round, then made the final at 50 to 1 in um, Hamburg. I'm taking him on here. Um, there's a couple of reasons I, I think this price on Jerry is is too short. Firstly, he, his stats aren't aren't any better really at main level on clay than O'Connell's. Uh, his win rate is slightly better, but his service points one return points one total is 101. It's probably gone down a bit after he lost to um, Zverev today, uh, and O'Connell is on 100, so very little to choose between them. Um, the head to head is one one. O'Connell won as a slight underdog at the US Open in 2020. So he's not gonna he's not gonna fear playing Jerry. Um again, there's the fatigue factor, isn't there? You know, Jerry's played a lot of tennis last week, big five hundred, got to the final. Um now he's got to go to very different conditions. In back at altitude where he played so poorly in Gestad, he's going back to altitude again. Is he gonna play as poorly again as he did in Gestad? That's quite possible because the conditions are very different between Hamburg and and Kitzbühel. Um, O'Connell will surely have had more time to pre prepare. He lost early last week, uh, so he should be far better prepared. And, and O'Connell also went well at slight altitude in, in Marrakesh, where I was earlier in the season. Um, and there were damp conditions there as well. So similarities between the two tournaments. And I just think I, I took plus 150 about um, O'Connell earlier on. I think all things considered, Jerry's too short here. O'Connell now is available at plus 150, uh, maybe a little bit lower. But so what price would you stop him at? What plus one thirty is that 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 plus no one thirty be okay? Yeah, I just think this is a tough ask for Jerry. It, it depends when he gets scheduled. It, the rain might save him if it's if it hammers it down and he you know he has to he gets a slightly later start. But we you know we don't know. Um, I'm happy to take O'Connell at the price that he is at the minute. And there's one other match you want to talk about, and that's Marcus Giron. Again. Oh, sorry, not Marcus. We've done that already. I'm <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Uh, we got Luca Van Ash against Alex Molkan. Uh, Van Asch obviously got a good week last week. He's minus 125. Alex Molkon got beat in the first round by Alexander Zverev. He lost in the first round six love in his first set as well. Uh, Van Asch is minus 125. Molkan is uh, even money. The spread here is one and a half. Plus one and a half for Molkan is minus 125. The total is 21 and a half. Uh, what do you think of this one? This is one of many first round matches in, matches in Kitzbühel that are very, very tight on price, aren't they? There's a lot of sort of 50 50 ish. Matches in Kitzbühel. Um, I'm not really interested in the, the the money line here. I'm more interested in the the over games. If you look at what Van Ash has done against left-handers, Molkan's a left-hander. Um, his last seven matches in a row against left-handers have gone over 23 and a half games. Most of them have gone well over 23 and a half games. So this this interests me because I, I think this is going to be a very tight match. Molkan's one of these players. He's not going to be looking forward to going to this North American hard court swing. He's an out-and-out -out clay man. He's not had the best of um, seasons this year. He's had his health problems, fitness problems. I'm not sure he's been fully fit at all in the last sort of couple of months or so. so. I think he'll be motivated for this, Mark. I think he'd probably see this as a, a decent chance to go deep in a, in a 250 um, in the last clay court event of the year. The heavy, if it is going to be heavy conditions, I think that would suit Molkan as well. I think the slower, the better for Molkan. Um, and as I say, Van Ash, quite inexperienced again, left, left, against left-handers, has struggled um, to beat them or, or certainly to beat them without going a very long distance. So the lean here is, is as I said, um, over 22 and a half games. Uh, I think that was plus 106 for Bet Rivers last time I looked. Yeah, you can bet the over 22 and a half plus 106. You can bet the un uh, the over 21 and a half at minus 125. So the over 22 and a half makes some appeal. There's also another tournament in Los Cabos in Mexico. 
Unfortunately, there's no prices here at the moment on the matches or the outright. So head to the Bet Rivers website tomorrow morning or overnight tonight. There will be some prices. Seven or six of passes in action. Tommy Paul, Cam Norrie, and Borna Coric, as well as Alex de Minoir. It's quite a good tournament there in the ATP Tour 250 on the hard courts. We'll catch up on that tournament in midweek when the odds come available. Remember, there's th- uh, four ways now to follow us on Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. You can download the podcast, Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is a brand new standalone uh, at Because We Win on the Betting Weekly Studios. And you can also uh, give us a follow on our Instagram account, which is at Because We Win, and also our Twitter account, which is also at Because We Win. Uh, next month's going to be a crazy month, August the soccer season returns in Europe. We have loads and loads of new shows, loads of new, new handicappers, lots and lots of action coming on here. And the tennis action really gets hot up with the tournaments in, in Washington, Cincinnati on the build-up to the US Open, which myself and Sean will be in attendance at. Uh, Sean, thank you very much for joining me. Sorry for the uh, thank you. The few mistakes here. Like I said, my I've got a little bit of a problem. My dog has poked his eye and I've got to get to the vets very quickly. Get so. I'm off there and I'll give you a little update on that in midweek. So have a great night. Uh, we'll, speak, we'll speak to you again on Tuesday, myself and Sean. I'll give you updates tomorrow on the WTA Tour events as well with all their action as well. But uh, there's a lot of bets there for you to, ha- to have on another busy week on the ATP Tour. Take care.